Nidwidians, we got a treated special. We have the Asus Republic of Gamers gaming PC, and this thing is a freaking monster. Anyways, we are going to do a review. We're going to do some upgrading, some benchmarking, some gaming, and that's what's in store for this video. All right, guys, let's bust right into this box, but a couple things. This has a Windows 10 Home, and this processor is a 3600 AMD 5 3600X with a six core 12 thread monster, 4.2 gigahertz boost and a 3.8 gigahertz base. So let's see what's under the skirt. Let's unwrap this monster. So one cool thing that I've seen uh, before I even pop this box open is it does come with an opaque, either glass or plexi side panel. I couldn't really tell from the, the photos, but either or, that's kind of cool because then you can see right inside. I'm already liking the foam in here. It seems two to three inches. So even if the box comes all tore up from the floor up, you're not going to have many issues. So let's go ahead and see if we can dump her right out onto the desk. It's upside down now. Let's see if everything goes spilling everywhere. Ooh, I did it without spilling everything. And it looks like we got a keyboard. A mouse, I'll open those up for you in a second. As you can see, the foam is pretty thick. Two inches, I know, I measured the foam. But packaging's important if you wanna have your PC in one piece. <laughs> if I knock myself out with the foam there. So it does look like they have a pretty thick side panel. Uh, I'm gonna say this is usually thicker than a lot of Plexi side panels. It does look like it has two screw holes, so I don't know how that mounts, but we'll figure it out. Quarter of an inch. So we'll set that off to the side for later. We'll get into that a little bit later. Let's, bu let's bust into the box. All right, we have a generic mouse. I'm gonna say this is not gamer quality. It is just cheap, throwawayable, you know, um, that type of quality. Um, another cool thing is the chipset on board here is a B550 chipset. This is an AM4 uh, socket, with, and the GPU is a GTX 1660 Ti, six gigabyte DDR6, and it has two X display port and two X HDMI ports. That means you can do a total of four monitors. All right, guys, we got our power cable. It looks kind of on the medium side. I wouldn't say that's the thickest I've seen, but it's not the thinnest. Ooh, a SATA cable. This is something new. Good job, Asus. It is a right angle, which is mm, kind of crappy. Um, we do look like we got some extra screws here and probably our standoff screws for our Plexi side panel. Um, a desktop PC installation guide. This will tell you where everything plugs in. It's a quick guide. For some of you, you may need this. It's a very quick guide of where, what plugs into where and stuff like that. Handy for when you set your PC up and you don't know what you're doing. And then it's got a stop, attention. Wait, if you experience a problem before us, problem, make sure to call us before you return your purchase. Probably a good idea because there is a bunch of things they could possibly do that would fix the PC. For instance, checking all the connections, the power connections, making sure they're seated all the way. And, um, you know, stuff like that. If, you're, if it's not turning on, but you, you plug your power in and you can see the power is you know, going to your GPU and stuff like that, could be as simple as just your front end connectors are not plugged in correctly. This is fully upgradable, by the way. So let's get into our keyboard box and see if it's another cheapy throwawayable keyboard. It'll get you started off the ground if you buy this thing for Christmas Day and you want to play some video games. It'll work. Actually, I'm going to give this keyboard, it's not as bad as the HP's, but it's still very tight. So it's a tight keyboard, as you can see. It's not super horrible, but there's at least some space in between these keys. A lot of the HP keys are like right next to each other. And if you have medium to large size hands, your hands are going to cramp up. You're not going to like it. Yes, if you're a teenager, it's probably all right. But as soon as you hit that mid-adult, you know, you're not going to like it. And that's all that comes in that box is a USB keyboard and mouse. Throw that off to the side and let's get to the dirt. Let's get to the main course. I don't know which end is what. I'm so confused because of how I pulled it out of there. I'm guessing this is the bottom. Well, it looks like we got some paper. I don't know what that's for. Good, good job on the packaging, Asus. And right off the top, I see the bottom. <laughs> hey, guess unboxing is a, it's an art form, huh? Well, something I noticed right away is they do have, I'm gonna say that's either a 120 or 95 millimeter hole. That, that almost looks like a 120 millimeter hole. A standard, I know I'm starting from the rear here. This is standard ATX power print. 
Uh, and you can see we got our two HDMI and our two display port. I know I'm starting from the rear here. And we got a microphones jack, a headphones jack, an auxiliary jack, a 10 1000 ethernet port. We have two USB 3.0s, two more USB 3.0s, an HDMI port and some more um, display stuff. Do not plug your display stuff into here. Most of the processors that are X series don't have a graphics, graphics uh, on board the processor. They don't have an APU or GPU or whatever the heck they're called now. Uh, old style PS2 keyboard and mouse port. And then we got two more USB 3.0 zeros. 3.0! Uh, no USB-C on our 1660 Ti. And let's move to the top here really quick. So if we come to the top, we've got some cool stuff we can kind of... Stuff is really sticky. Another headphones jack, two more USB 3.0s. Good job, good job, Asus, on keeping up with the 3.0s. I don't see one 2.0 port on this thing. And on the top, guys, we have a power button. It's kind of hidden right here. Probably your power reset combination button. If you hold it for four seconds, it'll shut your computer down. It's kind of like a hard reset. And both side panels do look like they come off. So let's start from the rear here and let's unscrew it. It's gonna be two normal Phillips. All right, so we gotta take this screw and this screw and this will help us take, this will allow us to take the side panel off. Ooh, Asus, paying attention to detail. Can you zoom in on that? You see what that is? Good job, Asus. Hey, that's one thumb right there, putting Loctite on screws so that they don't pop out in shipping. Good job, Asus. Of course, I got my trusty, dusty iFixit kit for Laying some screws down in little different compartments. Yeah, there's Loctite on both these screws. Good job, Asus. So this, this side panel doesn't just pull straight off and, and out. So it's a little bit different. This pulls, it's kind of like pulls back and then you angle out and up. And they have three little tabs here that kind of grab into here. So right off the bat, I noticed that our 1660 Ti is actually pretty long. I want to get a measurement here to see what our max GPU size is going to be. And it looks like we're at about 13 inches. I'm going to say 13, I'm not going to go 13 and eighth. Because, you know, even though it does go a little bit deeper in there, I'm just going to say 13. If it goes a little bit over 13, you'll be fine. But that's, that's a 3090 if you wanted to really put it in here. Right off the bat, I do notice that we have two 8-pin power connectors. For, uh, it does look like it's got the stock, you know, Intel AMD heat sink, just a generic heat sink. All right, so if you look in here, way in here, you guys aren't gonna be able to see it. I'll show it in the GoPro. Right there and right there are those plastic guys that you gotta kind of squeeze and you gotta pull these up. So this is gonna be kind of a hard. I do see some RGB lighting uh, strips right in the side right here, if you guys can catch that. So you'll have some, yeah, it goes all the way with RGB lighting stripping goes all the way down the front side and the top side. So let's see if we can get this front panel off. Am I, am I still stuck on this side? Is there tabs on this side? Guys, did they put tabs in the inside of here that I can't see? So I guess we're gonna inspect the other side. Let's get this other side panel off and, and up. And it is kind of leaning on this, so let's see. Gosh, Jesus, why? Hey, there we go. Huh. So you can see in here, they do got the USB 3.0 connector. Looks like a light connector and some other proprietary connector. All right, right off the bat, we can see our 550 watt power supply. They do kind of have this wire managed kind of nicely. So you could get some slack on that A pin, that A plus two. Let me see if they, they got some more wires buried in here. Uh, looks like we have some more. There we go, bundle of wires. So it looks like we have another EPS uh, four, eight pin. It's four plus four. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like we got 11 SATA power, power uh, connections and one Molex, one little piggy Molex. And that we don't doesn't look like we have anything more for GPUs or anything like that. Anyways, if you're gonna go above a 3070, you're gonna wanna at least a minimum six, 650 
uh, power supply. But let's swing around to the inside of the case here. And it does look like it's just, oh no, we got the door style to get the GPU out, but they do have it secured with some screws here. Right there, there's our M.2 slot with our 256 gigabyte you're going to want to upgrade that. That's going to be something you want to upgrade. If you want to play video games, that is going to be really sucking because you're going to get one or two video games and that's all you're going to get. You do got your four UDIM slots, which is to support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. It only has eight gigabytes of RAM currently and it's uh, 3,200 megahertz, which is like, it's, it's not a bad speed, especially for this processor. You are going to want to get to dual channel. It is a Hynex low power 1.2 volt piece of RAM. So I'm guessing by look, the look of this board as it's an ASUS board, is it's probably gonna have XMP support. Don't guarantee it, I will get into the BIOS and I will answer that question later in this video if it does have XMC, XMP support. Otherwise you're gonna be stuck with 1.2 volt RAM. Cast latency 21 or 22. Just getting a, a cast latency like 16 RAM if it does support XMP is gonna be a lot faster than a CL2122. We're gonna have to take the GPU out to see some more goodness in here. And they really have this tight in here. Holy crap. Does look like we have a bracket in the back giving this GPU support, which is gonna be good for shipping, which I just literally noticed this right now. So we're gonna have to take two more screws out way here in the inside. So a long number two Phillips would be, make your life a lot easier for this. So this bracket's gonna pretty much become useless if you do decide to upgrade past the 1660 Ti. There we go, our GPU is free. So I'm gonna grab on the top here because that's the only spot I can really get my hands. So I don't stick them in the fan. And the lock re-engaged. There we go, our GPU is out. Oh, hey Zeus. When I thought I might've had a three fan GPU, I have a blower style GPU. Now you're probably wondering, why was that kind of like an uh-oh? But only having a single fan blower style can cause some issues. Because this this fan is the only thing that's cooling this whole card. So it's, it's a lot more efficient when you have a dual fan or even a triple fan. It can do a lot better. These blower style um, cards are kind of a thing of the past. You really don't see them too much anymore. It is a nice styled card. Some uh, protective film there. I would remove this bracket and I wouldn't put this back. This GPU is not heavy enough to need this. May get a headache when you want to upgrade or downgrade this, or upgrade. You're not gonna to want to downgrade this. Upgrade this thing. And with the, if you go past this card, most likely they're either gonna be shorter or a lot longer than this and this bracket is just not gonna work. This is pretty well sized to this card. So, <clears throat> e-waste. Throw it in your recycling bin and be done with it. Unless you're gonna ship the PC to a friend or something, put that bracket back in. This will protect your PCI slot from doing some craziness. As we can see the meat in the guts, we do have one, two, three, four, five, or four SATA six gigabit per second. This will support either spinny spin disks or it'll support uh, SSDs. It does look like we only have one M.2 slot. We have a second adapter card here. You might, if you wanted to nix this, you could probably put another M.2 in this slot. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a standard M.2 slot. Um, best thing is probably to clone this and either put a one terabyte M.2 in here or get a two terabyte SSD and just throw it down in one of the, in the caddies down here. In the front, it does look like we could put a 90 millimeter, 95 millimeter, or nine, sorry, 92 millimeter fan in the bottom here. And in the top, I don't know what that is. Well, that looks like a 90, 92 millimeter but you might be able to get a 120 like Noctua in here, which might help with the cooling. Um, so going over the PCI 16X slot, back by the M.2, we do have one or two 1X slots. I don't, I'm pretty sure those are PCI Express 3 and you can put like a sound card or a, if you do like a streaming card, that's all you're really gonna get out of those. Um, they do have these dim slots, these U dim slots color coded. So the gray slots are gonna be the slots you fill up first, the black slots are gonna be the slots you fill up second. And something that I wanna talk about, if the computer doesn't power on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure all these doohickeys down here are pushed all the way in correctly. 
and I'm guessing they have them color coded. I don't know exact the exact days use color coding. They all look like USB plugs to me, or half USB plugs. The only one that has different color wires is this green one, and I'm guessing this is your front panel. All right, guys. So to put this wonderful piece of plexiglass on, let's see how uh, we might have tapered sides. Do we have tapered sides? I don't think we do. So let's kind of just match this up. That that looks pretty correct. All right. So I'm going to leave this side on, but we want to take the inside one off. Holy static. And before I even put that in there, you need four of these wonderful, like standoff thumb screw looking majiggies. I'll make you guys suffer through this. So I'll bring you back when I have all four installed. So one goes right here, right here, right here, and right there. All right. Just for safekeeping, I did put the two side panel screws back in the rear. You can choose to do what you want with your own PC. And then we're gonna line up the holes. And that kind of gives you, a, I'm gonna say an eighth inch gap. And you're gonna take these thumb screws that have a big flat head on them. And this holds your side panel in. Kind of gimmicky. I'm guessing you're gonna wanna tear this off first. Otherwise, it's not going to come. Probably increase your uh, ventilation for air. Because your front really does not have a lot of air intake other than this bottom portion right there. So I don't know, even if you added a 120, I don't know if it would actually be able to uh, suck enough air. Something we're going to have to test in the, the upgrading, when we do the upgrading. All right, voila, that is your front panel installed, guys. I'm going to get this thing loaded up and... Uh, Let's see how pretty she is. Let's check the BIOS out for XMP and see if there's any cool stuff in the BIOS I can show you guys really quick. That's what we're gonna do next before we do some gaming and benchmarks. So if you restart your PC, start hitting F2 and delete. There we go, we're in the main menu of the motherboard. It's gonna show basic stats, dates, serial numbers, and all sorts of cool stuff like that. And of course, up here in the top right is gonna be where you find the resize bar option, turn it on and off. You can also go into advanced and find it, but we're gonna jump into AI Tweaker really quick. This is where your DOCP uh, adjustment would be right in this menu on the AI Overclock Tuner. Um, it's not there because we don't have DOCP supported memory. Of course, there are there is other stuff in this menu as well. You do have ASUS performance enhancement. You do have um, memory frequency, which I will click on here in a second. And you can actually choose the memory speed if the DOCP doesn't choose it correctly for you. And then of course, there is an actual menu beyond this that you can go into that will allow you to actually change the drum timing control. Of course, we're about to jump in the DROM timing control, and the average Joe is probably not going to touch anything in here. But as you can see, our DROM cast latency at the top there is 22, which is like not very good. Uh, Asus, I don't know what you're thinking, giving us 1.2 volt uh, RAM with cast latency 22. Just Asus, naughty, naughty, naughty. Anyways, there is a bunch of stuff in here that, uh, you know, here's the Asus performance enhancement. You can enable it really quick and we're gonna jump over to advanced tab, AMD FTPM. There's really nothing in here that you're gonna touch. The, there might be some stuff in the CPU configuration menu that we just went into. But other than that, then you have your SATA stuff, which is gonna have like your hot, uh, hot swap, hot plug stuff and uh, enabling and disabling ports and to see if the drive is actually showing up on that port. That's what's really neat about this menu. Um, other than that, we're gonna go to onboard devices. It's gonna have your audio and your LAN controller stuff and some of your serial stuff. Then APM, this is gonna be advanced power management. Of course, the next menu that we're gonna go into is our resize bar and above 4G decoding. You're gonna want this on for gaming and stuff like that. It is kind of important. SRIOV support is something you're probably never gonna use. It is used for virtualization support. Uh, single root IO virtualization support. It's really not needed. USB configuration, this is where you can do XHCI handoff, USB mass storage drive support, USB drive device enable and disable and stuff like that. You can actually go into the USB single port control and disable like your front ports. So if you have kids or something that are gonna try to stick stuff in there, it won't work. And this is where you would do it right here. 
And of course, network stack, which is normal gamers are never going to touch anything in there. Uh, NVMe configuration. This is kind of nice because it will allow you to do short and long tests and double check drives to make sure they're working good. Um, get like their statistics on the drive and all that sort of jazz. Um, you can also go to AMD PBS. There's nothing really in here. It's just some data link features that we are probably not going to use as a gamer. Um, one stat that once we get back here into the menu, the AMD overclocking stuff, you might touch this if you get into like advanced overclocking. But other than that, we're going to jump over to the monitor. As you can see, our CPU temperature, motherboard temperature, uh, voltages and all sorts of stuff. And now we're in the Q fan stuff. And this is where you can adjust your fans if you want to do it through the BIOS instead of using AI suite. Um, I would say just use AI suite. It's so much simpler than trying to control it in the BIOS because then you don't have to restart your computer and do all sorts of mumble jumble to get into here. Um, next thing on the menu is the Mr. Boot. Uh, the boot menu stuff you're going to find if you add any drives and you want to change the order of them or you want to put Windows on a different drive, you can subjugate it here. Um, you got fast boot, boot logo, and then of course you got boot configuration. And if you go into this menu right here, you can select the Windows partition drive. And what I just clicked on right there, if I hit OK, it would actually boot me into Windows. And that's going to override what your boot drive is. You got a Asus Easy Flash is going to allow you to update your BIOS if you download it to your desktop. And it allows you to flash your BIOS and update it through your, you know, it makes it really simple. Um, Asus Secure Erase, this is going to allow you to erase SSDs and M.2 securely through the, you know, it's like a formatting tool in the actual BIOS. So if you have a drive that has something on, you're trying to install Windows and it won't let you, you can go in there and that'll help you. Um, this little tool is kind of neat. It's Asus SPD. That's going to show you all your memory uh, module information and what's on like your DIM and RAM slots. So SK Hynix, and it's going to show you the speed. It's going to show you the uh, JDEX support. You know, timings and stuff like that. As you can see, cast latency 22, boo, and uh, other stuff like that. Um, we are going to go to exit. So you always want to save changes and reset. But if you ever have problems or your computer isn't working and it's it's like boot looping or doing some crazy stuff, you can go and load optimized defaults. The optimized defaults will allow you to bypass any problems or settings that you might have invertedly set that is a lot not allowing your computer to boot. And then go ahead and hit load optimized settings, and you know you'd be back at, back to the races. Anyways, guys, we're gonna get. Uh, back into Windows and we're gonna do some benchmarking gaming and see how this beast stacks up. I want to drop some info on you really quick. This is about the BIOS and some McAfee stuff. So one thing I want to tell you guys is I did go into the BIOS and this stick of RAM that comes with the ASUS does not support DOCP slash XMP. This is an AMD machine, so it's going to be DOCP. 
I did pop a stick of Kingston 3200 megahertz in really quick to see if it does pop up in the thing, and it does. I will show that in an upgrade video when we throw two sticks of what, you know, 3200 megahertz in to do some testing. But let's jump over to the on-screen really quick. I wanna show you some bloatware. There's not a ton of bloatware. One thing I wanna warn you, there's a crap ton of upgrades. It took me over two hours to upgrade this thing. And you know, my onset staff was like, oh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a 3600 X. It's, you know, three, four, five years old, whatever the processor is. I'm like, let's look at the manufacturer date on the box. How old was the manufacturer date on the box, guys? Nine months, it was made nine months ago. No reason it should take me two hours to update a PC. Asus, get on the ball, guys. Come on, guys, you're, you're a system integrator, you should know better. You make motherboards, you make graphics cards, you know better. You're, you're a technology, like company, you should know better. Anyways, sorry, I'm giving you the third degree, but you guys deserve it, because you should know better. Let's jump over the on-screen really quick. I wanna go over bloatware. It's gonna be quick, dirty, and simple. Um, if you wanna see your bloatware, you type program in the start menu. And it's either gonna look like this on Windows 10 or it's gonna be a little bit cleaner on Windows 11. And first thing we gotta get rid of, I don't care what you do, no matter what, get rid of McAfee. There's three things right here. Go ahead and install them. I'm not gonna show the whole install thing. Do not answer their surveys. They don't need to know any of your personal information. Just know, just uninstall it. Get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. They're, the Windows antivirus has the same database that all of them do. They all share a giant database. And Windows, when Windows finds a, a virus, they upload it, McAfee has it. When McAfee finds it, they upload it. When Caspersy finds it, they all share that. So there's no point in paying money for antivirus. Now McAfee might hold it back a week just so they could say they're first, but let's be honest, unless you're, the, you're messing up between the user and the keyboard, you should be fine. There are some nitwits like me back in the day that would download stuff in emails or click on the wrong links and hey, that's your own fault. Wipe Windows and start over. But Windows does have tons of protection if you enable it. It can get kind of nasty at the point where you can't even move folders around and stuff if you really want to get that crazy. It's how I have my grandmother's computer set up and she still every couple months Hey, my computer's broken. Can you come fix it? Sure, Grandma. <sighs> it drives me nuts, but I love the woman, so what am I gonna do? Um, let's move on to the conclusion of this video and uh, let's see where TechNet rates this thing. All right, guys, so we're coming to the end of the conclusion of this video and there's some things to love, but there's also some things to hate about this PC. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of some of the e-waste, the bracket. I'm definitely not a fan of the shotgun style cooler on the, the Asus 1660 Ti. I don't like it so much so that it's gonna lose half a thumb right there, um, along with this intake. Those two things, half a thumb right there. Asus, you know better. You've been building PCs for well over 20 years. You've been, you've been in, the, in this you know, maker space for well over 20 years. You should know better. The updating, you should know better. Why does a user that probably is buying a pre-built because they don't really know what they're getting themselves into or they're getting it for their kids or they're just getting it because they don't have enough time in their day to research and build a computer. If some of these flaws weren't here, this thing's fully upgradable, I could easily give it two thumbs up. It's only gonna get a thumb and a half. And that's where we're sticking with this Asus 10DK whatever or the G10DK. I think that's the, the model number. They got so many of them. And if you try looking your model number up, it shows you different specs and different parts. It drove me nuts when I was writing the script for this thing. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm Tech Nitwin, and look forward to more unboxings and upgrades. And that's what we're going to be doing in the future.